road into the sky. Never let adventures pass you by. Be free and follow your crazy dreams. We live in our vision in the RV. Come ride with us and you'll be free. looking at our route and realized we've got a very long drive to get to our next destination. Today we're leaving the KOA in Thunder Bay and we're going to start a long journey around the Canadian portion of Lake Superior, the world's largest freshwater lake. This drive is known as the Canadian part of the Lake Superior Circle Tour. Ahead of us. We do, eh? <laughs> but we're gonna take it in baby steps. A few days at a time, going around the Great Lakes. A lot of the time during our travels, we don't know how far we may want to travel in one evening. So instead of making reservations in advance, we make sure there are places to stay along our route and then just choose the next closest place when we are ready to call it a day. But this area was a little different, so we called in advance and made a reservation at White Sand Lake Campground located at Rainbow Falls Provincial Park. Our total charge for the night was $33.02 with no hookups. as we're finding all these majestic places through our travels. I always think of our parents and wish they could be here with us to see these places in person, especially my dad now that he has passed. I never forget the day we came back to Iowa when I seen him for the first time in a year. He was in the hospital diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. My dad never cried, but he looked at me that day, grabbed my hand and said with a shaken light voice, as long as you're happy and enjoying yourselves traveling, that's all that matters. The translation was clear. He missed us, but he wanted us to be happy. If I could hear my father's voice, he would tell me to move on. He would say I'll be just fine. Yeah, he would tell me we have time. Time to laugh and time to heal. A favorite song is on repeat. Drinking wine until the dawn. Knowing soon we'll be back home.
What is that smell? Do you smell that? Mm -mm. It smells like poo. Oh, funny. Not oh, really. Poo. Oh, Winnie the Pooh. Kind of a honey smell to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're at Winnie the Pooh Park, where it all began. It all began over 80 years ago here in White River, Ontario, when a young black bear cub suddenly became an orphan. A man by the name of Harry Colburn was traveling across Canada to embark on overseas duty in the First World War in England. He purchased the little black bear cub from a trapper who had came across the orphan cub. Lieutenant Coleman named the bear Winnie from his hometown of Winnipeg, Manitoba and she would become an official mascot of the Fort Garry Horse, a militia cavalry regiment. Winnie would even sleep under Colburn's cot. In 1914, Colburn learned he would be shipped to France, so he decided to settle Winnie into the London Zoo because she would not be able to go with him. Winnie eventually became the fan favorite attraction at the zoo. It is said that visitors would knock on her door and she would come out to greet them. She even let children ride on her back and eat out of their hands. Captain Colburn would return to visit Winnie during his leave. Because of her popularity with visitors and children, he decided he could not take her back to Canada, so he officially donated Winnie to the London Zoo on December 1, 1918. The little bear captured the hearts of many visitors to the zoo, one in particular named Christopher Robin Milne. Christopher Robin and his father, writer A.A. A. Milne, would come and visit Winnie frequently. Christopher Robin was the one who added Pooh to her name after a swan they met on a previous holiday. Christopher Robin received a teddy bear on his first birthday, August 21, 1921, that he originally named Edward Bear, but it wasn't long before he changed the bear's name to Winnie the Pooh after his favorite lovable bear from London Zoo. After seeing the joy that this little bear brought to so many people, especially his son, Christopher Robin, A.A. A. Milne started to write children's books based on the bear Winnie the Pooh from the London Zoo. May 12, 1934 was a sad day for many people. After 20 years of a long, full life in the zoo, Winnie passed away. In 1961, Walt Disney purchased the copyright to the Winnie the Pooh book. You can actually overnight park here at this Winnie the Pooh Park. And there's even another little area on the other side there that you can park. And the All Stays app, it does not show this place as an overnight stay on the app. So just so you know, if you're coming through, you can save some money without staying in a provincial park or any of these parks around here or campgrounds by staying the night here if you need to. There has been RVs coming and going constantly. We've stayed the night here with uh, four others. So one other thing I wanted to touch on real quick is if you remember when we were crossing the Canadian border, we had talked about using Visible, which is Verizon, and we upped our plan to the Visible Plus to have data, make calls and everything here in Canada. The service was supposed to drop our data speeds down to two gigabytes after we used 0.5 gigabytes well right here in town there is a, a tower over here when we arrived here we started um, streaming a movie so that we would use that up just to check and see what the speeds were afterwards and the speeds actually are still fast we're getting 120 ish for a download speed and around 20 for an upload speed right here even after using the phone as a hotspot all that time for the for the movie that used up more than that uh, 0.5 allotted amount so it's still giving us the fast speeds even as a hotspot we used it as a hotspot did a speed test on the computer to see if the hotspot was you know speed was lowered and it wasn't it was the same which is different than it was in the states uh, it drops it down to five gigabyte speed when we're in the states all right, that's all I got. We were parked way over there. So there's a camping area over here too. This is the area I was talking about earlier. And they have a dump station right here. It is five Canadian dollars. They have your flush hose here. And then around the park in different areas, they have really long hoses set up so you can fill for fresh water. They have one right over here on the other side of that red
trash can behind that tree over there. Then there's one over by the playground and Winnie the Pooh. So that's really nice and that's free. And you can park here for free. They said if you need to stay more than one night, just let them know what your circumstance is and they don't care. I heard you say You found the story All tucked away In the back of the room Been lost for years Far away of our day-to-day -day routine in the corner of our minds we're not in in Sault Ste. Marie last night and we were gonna stay at the casino uh, downtown but we didn't really like it was a little shady how it looked <laughs> <laughs> so we went up sketchy. to uh, yeah so we went up to the Walmart and stayed there and I bet there was 20 some RVs we didn't count but there was a lot there was a lot probably the most yeah. RVs we've ever seen at any Walmart. Yeah. If you're looking at your All Stays app, they say it's okay, but they warn you that there's a city ordinance and it says, but they never do anything about it. Well, apparently they Obviously. don't because there's <laughs> tons of RVs that stay there. Although they closed at 10 o'clock, so FYI. In Sault Ste. Marie this morning after we left Walmart, we went to this truck wash. It's at a, It looks like it's at a business called uh, TM TMS. TMS. Truck Center. So just go there and then go down because this business is separate the, the truck wash go down a few bays until you go to the bay that has an amber light above the bay there's no sign that says truck wash or anything that we saw it's bay number six I okay it on his card. Ah. and uh they do a truck wash there and he uh he sprays it down really good with a degreaser that takes everything off and washes the name of the wash is flawless truck and rv wash ltd but again it's right uh, right across from the flying j as a matter of fact mm -hmm. and look for the sign that says tms and then there's a blacktop road that goes straight down to it to the building wandering around and searching for a place to fall there's a time for us i know we could have it all if you stay for a while i will show you i can make the call We're in Sudbury making a stop at Costco. Got to get a few groceries. Costco's everywhere.
I promise to go in the casino with you this time if you don't headbutt me. Just come on. Okay. And last time I went to a casino and listened to a band. Hurt. Wrong side. Look at all these RVs staying at this casino. Way over there. She's going back to see if we locked it. Yeah, I, I, you can you can actually tell from over here. You can hear it and you can see the light. We're excited to go to Toronto tomorrow. Aren't we? We are. We are. We yeah. are. We are. Sorry, I think I'm half asleep because it's been a long day of driving. Well, we're going to run inside and have a breakfast brunch. The breakfast brunch, I think, is only on Sundays. It looked like it didn't say Saturday. 10 a.m. to 4. Well, I don't think we have anything to worry about. There's no line so far, but we are early. They got to close it off. You think they knew we were coming? Mm -hmm. tour buses back here that uh, we read inside it was only ten dollars to take the tour bus but we couldn't find where they take you so if you come here you might want to check into that and ask we didn't get a chance to ask buffet here is very good very good Two million seven hundred and ninety five thousand population. downtown Toronto we found a place to park here for $40 for the day I think it is yeah, flat rate. yeah but he still demanded that we take two spots and charge us double $80 Canadian but still, yeah still pricey. we could have pulled in uh, there's a few spots here that our back end would hang over not this one because there's something in the road there but there are a couple down there Michelle rolled her window down and told him we can fit in there no you're too big people can't get around and I got out and I explained to him how our back end hangs over. 
and the front end will not be any further. No, you're too big. <laughs> Just wanting to charge us double. Yeah. So we're taking up half of a throughway and hope to God nobody will clip us. Yeah. This is what she's talking about here. There is a lot to do in Toronto. Michelle was doing some searching as we were driving. If you come to Toronto, you're just gonna have to kind of choose what you wanna do and make the best of your time. What time is it? 1.52. Oh my gosh, almost two o'clock. Construction of the CN Tower began in February 1973 and was completed in February 1974. It involved more than 1,500 workers and the attachment of its antenna was finished in April 1975. The CN Tower, also called the Canadian National Tower, Broadcast and Telecommunications Tower, stands at 1,815 feet. It was the world's tallest freestanding structure until 2007, when it was surpassed by the Burj Dubai building in Dubai. That's the line for the CN Tower to get tickets. At 2 in the afternoon on a Sunday, there's people hanging over the edge. That's this. What's that? You can do an edge walk. We got our tickets to the tower and an extra 10, it was 45, uh, we haven't converted that to US dollars, $45, right? And mm -hmm. then it was, and then an extra $10 to go up to the sky pod. Sky pod. It's supposed to be 33 stories higher than the main observatory. Roger Center here with the Blue Jays play. You've got Ripley's Aquarium over here. You got people in line to do their uh, little selfie over there. I think we should cheat and put a little tripod there and just stand back here. Show me what it's like to be circling among the clouds Because without you by my side I would be stuck here on the ground You're lighting up the way I can see the road ahead of me I won't be stumbling in the dark Your eyes are shining like the stars I was there the CN Tower was built with the purpose of fixing a telecommunications issue that started to be seen after the building boom began and there were taller buildings being built. Radio waves that used to travel at lower levels across the city began to be interrupted by new slabs of concrete and steel structures. First opened to the public on June 26, 1976, and was initially privately owned, but ownership of the tower was transferred to the Canadian government in 1955 and is now managed by a public corporation. The CN Tower is by far Toronto's most distinctive landmark. It is a major tourist attraction that includes observation decks, a revolving restaurant at some 1,151 feet, and an entertainment complex. It's also a center for telecommunications in Toronto. Fun facts. On a clear day, you can see Niagara Falls atop CN Tower's sky pod. Fact number two. The CN Tower survives 75 to 80 lightning strikes per year. That's a really cool view up here. They have a, a restaurant up here too. In 2011, the tower was subject to a record 52 lightning strikes in just 84 minutes. The tower is safe for visits even during the heaviest of the storms. The tower is well equipped with copper stripes running down to the grounding strips to prevent any damage from such massive lightning strikes. Keep in mind those are Canadian prices.
Now we're going further, higher, <laughs> to the Sky Pond. This is what uh, was the extra $10. You to death in Canada. You can take me high. high, high. And here we are. Feels like I can fly. High, high. Uh, oh, me. Oh, my. camera too. Fact number three, the glass floor can withstand weight of 35 moose. Fact number four, it takes 1776 stairs to reach the top. Was that freaky? Take me high. I gotta say, squeeze you in there like sardines, okay? Fact number five the tower's edge walk allows darers to lean back hands free over to run. Good luck. One of the best things about visiting somewhere new like we are today is when you see things that you weren't even expecting. Sadly, we haven't even heard of the CN Tower before, but we sure were glad that we decided to take the tour up for the amazing views. There's so much to see around Toronto, and we only had a couple more evenings in the area before we needed to move on in order to make it to our future stops before the Hershey RV Show in September. Grab a jacket real quick. We're gonna walk down along the bay here. 77 degrees, so you gotta have a jacket. Something different, a new way of dancing. Everybody has headphones on. And you listen to the music and dance, so you're not bothering everybody else with the music. Good thing you got your jacket. It's a little chilly. Yes, it is. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it's a good thing. <laughs> Trying to get some brownie points here. I would have been cold. It's it's not. I mean, it's, it's okay bad. for me, but she gets yeah. colder easier than I do. Like, you need to know everything about our personal life. We're just gonna, you know what I did earlier? I went wee-wee. That's the best, that's the best my French gets right there. I'm sorry. There are many cruise tours that you can take from the harborfront area. Some will take you around showcasing Canada's most dynamic city, from towering skyscrapers to Toronto's famous islands. There are even cruises that take you to Niagara Falls. Unfortunately, we had to miss out on some of these cruises since they were not available in the evenings, and that was our only time to explore during the week. I wish I had the camera on when you were out there dancing. Like oh, yeah. Crazy man, you were getting it on, honey. Yeah. You were getting it on. That must have been in your dream. It might have been.
burger, gluten-free bun, little Caesar salad. What was it you got? I got the uh, brisket sandwich with the market salad. And this is your onion. Cup. Yes, it is. <laughs> we're going to head out of this, this area, area and go find our place that we're going to spend the night. <laughs> We really liked the harbor front area, and we wanted to take a cruise at least one of the next two evenings, so we decided to try the GO Transit and utilize the train to take us back downtown where we could walk to the harbor front area. We stayed at uh, Bronte Creek Provincial Park Campground last night, and uh, there is a Bronte GO station just right down the road. It's like metro train, basically. Yeah, it's a metro train. They have a metro bus as well. <laughs> But it's cheaper to take that and park here in this secured lot than it is to go down there and get charged double for that from that guy. We won't be doing that again. Holy cow. I think it's like $11 to go down there and we're uh, gonna find out. That's probably just a one way. Okay, so we have to tap credit card. You pay partial here and then when you get to the next station, you tap your credit card there to pay the other half and do the same on the way back. Each person has to have a different credit card because that actually becomes your ticket. However, it does mention something about a Presto card. So I wonder if that is like a normal train type. If you're going to do you can go multiple times or something yeah. like that. So yeah, so your credit card becomes your ticket. So it recognizes you by your credit card. We left here and now we're just arriving here and we're going to go to Union Station. Amsterdam Brewing is where we ate the other day. Rogers Center and the CN Tower is right in here, mm -hmm, right, right there. there. And Union Station is where this train's going to take us. So then we we'll just walk mm -hmm. straight down to the uh, the harbor, harbor here, yeah. Yeah. which is where the uh, the view of the islands. And this is where all the cruises are at. Not only is it cheaper, but it's also a way to avoid traffic and not have to worry about finding a parking spot. We were a little nervous about how to get back to our train station later at Bronte and uh, so always ask somebody if you're uh, worried about it like we were. Pretty simple process. It was so beautiful this evening that we just walked around the harbor and enjoyed a beautiful view with our pie for dinner. Pizza pie that is at a place called the Pie Bar. The pizza was fantastic, even the gluten-free pizza. Oh, mamma mia. Oh, what a wonderful pizza pie. Mine is um, prosciutto arugula. Mine's called the Godfather. His is mostly all meat on a gluten-free crust, and mine is not gluten-free crust. Limoncello cheesecake. That's very good. The first night went so smooth that we decided to take the GO train again the next evening and take a sunset cruise on a ship called the Tall Ship Kayama. sure where to get tickets. You can get them online, but there's a little booth way down there. Right in front of the ship. Nothing ever felt as good easy as when we were young oh, oh, oh though I felt misunderstood it was a pleasure running away with you we were 
Just children acting like a doll. Crazy, naive, bold, and carefree. We were kids having kids. Crazy, naive. That we didn't fall. They keep us on speaking terms. We grow and we learn. I have no regrets, only forgets. Oh, a big thank you to life for giving us end. Oh, when the time is right, there's no wasteland. Children acting like adults, crazy, naive, bold, and carefree. We were kids and kids, crazy, naive. It amazes me that we didn't fall. We had to stop at Beaver Tails. There's two things that Canada's known for, right? And that's the poutine, that's the fries, and the gravy, and the cheese curd. And uh, we tried it on the boat. It wasn't that great. We've seen some that looks a lot better. And then this Beaver Tail, which is it's a pastry, isn't it? I think it's a deep fat fried pastry that's flattened out to look like the shape of a Beaver Tail. And then they have different flavors to the basically just cinnamon and sugar, like melted butter and stuff like that. That's what we're getting, just the classic beaver. But they come in other flavors. This is the classic beaver tail. Look yeah. at all that cinnamon and sugar. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, it's hot. It's good. Tastes like cinnamon sugar toast. If we were going to do a daytime cruise, we'd do one of the other ones because they didn't tell any history really and nothing. Um, you know, it was just music and food and drinks, people dancing and just having a good time. And then that sunset part of it was pretty, very pretty. The view was astonishing, especially at night when you're coming in, it's dark and the building lights are all up. Very nice. Yes. Daytime, do a different place. Nighttime, that's perfect. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, click that little bell, and hit that thumbs up. See you next week.